Hi, this is Chef Dennis, and today I'm going to be coring sweet peppers and slicing and dicing them. So we've got two different colored ones here. We've got yellow and red. So let's start with the red. I'm going to take that, I'm going to grab a knife. I like to have a lot of knives here, a lot of options. And I'm going to cut the end off. Now I'm not going to throw that away, I'm going to utilize it once I get the other cuts done. So there you go, that's one. Let's do the yellow now. Same thing, we're going to cut the end off. And we have it right there. So we're just going to move this, this to the side for now. Okay, first thing we're going to do is take the red one, go through here, just like that. Everywhere it's connected, take it out. You don't have to go all the way through because we're going to turn it over and we're going to do the other side as well. They're very fresh. Oh yeah. So now if you do it right, beautiful. if you do it right, you should be able to just push it on through. Let's try it this direction. Okay. There we go. So that's it. So we push it through. The seeds are there. Let's remove some of those seeds. Take my cleaver here and get rid of that. So that's one. Second one. Do the same thing. Using a different knife. This one's really sharp. Same way, flip it over, kind of go around. You know what a circle looks like, you just go around in a circle and then you take it out. Perfect. You can pull it out like this if you have an issue with it. And that's about where I want them right now. So I'm gonna let you see those, okay? Now, next thing we do. We take the knife and we clean it up a little bit. So we're gonna go into here. There's ribs that are in there. And if you just take the knife and run it along the bottom. Make sure you show them the inside so they can see how nice and clean that is. Absolutely. Other than a couple little seeds there, that's pretty clean. So there you go. That's what the inside looks like once you take these ribs out and the remaining seeds. So let's get, let's move that over and let's do the next one. Let them see what the ribs look like in that guy. You can see the ribs right there uh, you, and basically you're just going through and cutting just like that to remove them. Getting all those membranes out. Now, it's, I, I find it best, rather than set it up like this and try to get to it, I find it best just to set it on the side and just make sure that it, it doesn't roll on you. When we do cooking class parties, um, we always stress to our clients and their guests, flat surfaces, make sure you can grip something, make sure you create flat edges because it's much safer than having something rolling around like that safety always comes first with us so that there you have it these are like that sweetie those are beautiful now what now now you decide what you're gonna do with them I'm gonna cut it through and I'm gonna show you how to cut that the other one I'm going to take and I'm gonna cut it into thirds nice thing about peppers is the um, ribs and the markings on the outside give you great guidelines Exactly, and the thing is, there you have that right there. It's not that I'm uh, that I'm doing something different with it. It's that sometimes it's easier to work than trying to take this and push it down. You want to cut from this side if you can help it, because it's a little bit easier to get through. And you rock your knife slowly like that. Now, if I wanted to do Julian strips, I would do it this way. Just go through, take them out, and then I would have them. Just make sure that 
if you don't cut all the way through, your knife doesn't go all the way through, just take them and, and move them a little bit and, se and separate them. They pull apart very easily. Very easily. So, that is, that is one cut right there. Another one we can do is you take it and let's say you want to dice. You cut all these strips a little bit wider. Now and you'll see with most of our cutting and with Dennis's cutting here, he curls his fingertips under to keep from cutting his fingertips. I will show you how to do that in one second. Once, uh, pay attention to this right here and then I will cut the pieces. Uh, I try to get them as uniform as possible, but I'm not concerned if they're a little off. Perfect in a chopped salad. So that's what we have here. Those are two cuts. Next. There's another thing you can do. It's, it's, it's not a real defined cut, but I like to do it because it's kind of fun to do. And I like if I want something that's a little bit different look. So basically you take it and you cut little triangular pieces out of it. Just go one way and the other way. But if you want something that looks a little bit different, you can do it that way. Very nice on a salad or a pizza. So there's another cut for you. Now I've got the red one over here. The, the pieces, basically, what I'm going to do with the pieces is I'm going to, what I use whatever cut, whatever thing I want to make, and I'll make, and I'll just add them at the very end to the pieces. So the pieces here, if I wanted to, I could take them, shape them up a little bit, so they're, so they're kind of close to these, and they're not perfect, but most of the time, I don't need them to be perfect. I, you can also use pieces like that to taste test your produce, say for a pepper. It's a great idea to get an idea of how strong a flavor you're working with, sweetness level, and if you're creating a dressing or a sauce or anything, you can work around that. Plus it just tastes good. So, so I've added that to it, and this is, you can see that there. Nice. So let's go here and let's say I want to cut them really, really fine. So I'm going to cut as thin as I can possibly cut that. And what Christine was referring to earlier, rocking my knife, keep my fingers back. This is what I do, is I take, I take my uh, knuckle here and I make it st stand out a little bit more in my fingers. And just like that, everything is curled under, the thumb stays back. The thumb stays back because when I first started doing this, I would get lazy and I would then the thumb would creep out and you do not want to clip the end of your thumb and after a while I figured that was no fun. So Nor the end of I your decided, fingers because a scraped knuckle exactly. heals much more quickly than a um, fingertip. Exactly and the only thing you really have to be concerned about when you're doing the knuckle thing is raising the blade up too high and coming back down onto the knuckle. So you always stay, you always stay like this. Make sure your knife, that you're hitting it somewhere around here. You don't want to get it close to the edge there because you can cut yourself. I would encourage anyone watching to take it slowly and practice. Get a knife practice. that has a good grip, something that you're comfortable with in your hand. We use a variety of knives. We both use different knives. We have favorites. We have some. He's got bigger hands than I do. It's all a matter. Knife is very, very personal. So don't feel badly if you start out with one and it doesn't feel right. You're simply searching for the right knife when for I, you. Exactly. And what I do is I'll start out a certain way here, like, I, like you're seeing. And if I get little pieces that don't cut quite right, I just take, take them off to the side and then cut them the rest of the way so that they are uniform, at least semi-uniform. So this would There's be... There's room for all of it. This would be a smaller dice right there that Christine Those is showing you. Those colors are just you. spectacular. So... I love summer produce. And what can I do with these? Let's do this. Let's, let's make some more julienne cuts. This can also be used when they ask for matchstick vegetables in a yep. stir fry or a salad. 
There are your matchsticks. There you go. So you can kind of mix, mix and match your matchsticks. Very match pretty sticks. on a plate. So that looks nice, and we'll take these little pieces here, just cut them in two, like that, just to incorporate them into the dish, any type of dish that we're doing. Like I said before, they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be close. If you get if you get people who are out there measuring every little thing that you're making, uh, it'll be it'll be a first because they don't do that. People look at it and they and they like the colors and that and that they're very happy that way. So you do that. Fresh and appetizing should be your main goals. You notice, you notice sometimes I'll switch it up. I will cut one way and then I'll cut another. Sometimes I go like this. I don't want to do that. I'll go straight down. So I might do a little bit more that way. Why do I do that? It's just after a while you uh, cooking and cutting and doing things, you're, you just get into routines and sometimes you feel more comfortable at the moment cutting it a certain way. So Christine's going to show you. Those are just a few cuts right there. So uh, Julianne, two different colors. This right here is more closer to a large dice. This is kind of an irregular cut. So I'm just basically doing kind of like triangles an back and forth. decorative type uh, and, shape And for this it. is a little finer. So you can do whatever cuts you want to do. But these are a few that you could work with. And you can see that we've pretty much utilized most things on here. Uh, if you want to get really picky, you could cut the rest of this out of here. And that might be nice to eat. Take these. And these are going to compost, but I'm sure that there are other uses for them. Some people will dry them and save them for next year. Plant them. It's all, all a matter of what you have time, inclination, and talent to do. Exactly. Just so, keep an eye out for seeds. There are a couple you can pick off there. And... Here we go. And so we'll pick up seeds and we've got some nice peppers to utilize this weekend.